Sunday. Next Sunday. <laughs> Boy, do we have a lot to go through. Oh my goodness. So, uh, I know Char is out uh, because allergy. Mm -hmm. I could. I feel her. Pain. I saw her yesterday, and it was rough. And she was like, "It's worse today." And I was like, oh, "And her daughter." Yeah. Too, I was so. like, "Yeah, you stay home." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. All right, Father, we just uh, we thank you for your word, number one. We thank you for the sacrifice that you sent your son to pay for us a debt we could never pay. And Father, I just thank you so much for your willingness to do that, Jesus' willingness to do that and suffer and, and die in our place. I pray, Father, that you would just give us clarity this morning and that we would also learn from each other. In your precious name we pray, amen. Um, I am going to finish at 10.45 because Ray's going to come in and give us communion because I thought that was kind of appropriate since that's what we study. Um, I'm going to do a real quick review and I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start at chapter 24. <laughs> I'm like, just review there so that we get into this. And I also want you to know I am going to be pulling from the Gospels details. Matthew, I, I was asking my husband, why? Why would Peter leave this out? I mean, Matthew, leave this out, leave that. He goes, he sees that he's not a people person. He's a detail, money kind of thing, you know. And it's not the other, you know, Matthew, or look, John, Mark, they're people. Matthew's like, mm. you know, he's detail, detail, facts, figure. I'm like, okay. Well, that, makes, that does make sense. So as we were, you know, you know the woman that anointed his feet was who? One of the Marys. He doesn't say that. <laughs> you know, he doesn't say it's so many things. Okay, so so just be prepared to write down, oh, this was in John, this was in Mark, this was Luke, this was, let me fill in the little detail, timeline wise, okay? So my observation worksheet has so many little references. This is what happened here, this is what happened here, okay? Because it's just left out. And I'm in detail and I want to know where he is. That's my goal this morning is to know where he is, who's doing what to him, and what happens. And context, huge context, okay? Um, did you realize that after, it's after the resurrection that he tells Peter, feed my sheep? Okay, I, we're gonna get into that. I, yes, sir. I didn't know, I was like, oh, that's after? Oh, wow, okay. It's after the denying. Well, yes, and it's after the denying, yeah, and three times. context is huge, it's just huge. It makes that interaction way more personal. Way more personal. He's asking if he loves him. Oh my gosh, you know what I did. Completely agree, but on that, I never realized that three times he asked God to let the pass, cup pass from him. That was, I, I mean, I knew, I heard the three times denying and the three times feeding my sheep, right. but the three, I was like, wait, there's three. Right? <laughs> right? This is, and this is, okay. Chapter 24, right? You just, location again, remember, he's leaving the temple. It's very important that we know if he's not there. Uh, chapter 24 is also telling us about the abomination of desolation, which is huge, and tribulation, okay? Think about the timing. He's headed. It's big, big, big suffering. Chapter 25, you got the parable of the ten virgins. What was that main point for that? Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Don't let your oil, you know, you know he's coming, so why'd you let it go out? Why do you even have an efficient supply? Uh, the talents. What he's given you? What are you doing with what he's given you? The separating the sheep from the goats. I don't want to be a goat. And also, the, when did you? When did we see you hungry, naked, thirsty, yeah. stranger? We visit and feed you. When did we do that? So big, huge thing. When you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, right? You've done it to me. And now we go into chapter twenty-six. All right. Uh, Says Jesus had finished all these words. Why is that a big deal? Signifies the end of the teaching. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Let's try this again. Oh, it's not working. I feel like I have gremlins in my computer. They only come out when I come to study. <laughs> That could be a real thing, right? <laughs> Go with it. Okay, let's see if that works. Oh, it did. That was for you. Okay, okay, good. Thank you, Lord. 
Um, so he had finished all of these words. Okay, now be in context. That's chapter 25. What was all these words? How do you leave off? That was the paraphrase. Right, when you've done it to the least right. of these, these right? you've yeah. done it, right? Okay. Now he says to his disciples, bye-bye crowd. You know at, that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people were gathered together in the court of the high priest, big location, right, named Caiaphas, and they plotted together to seize Jesus by stealth, boy, was that the truth, and kill him. Okay, they've upped a game now. They've just taken it to murder. Because this is premeditated, okay? But they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise a riot might occur among the people. Now, Jesus tells the twelve he's going to be handed over and crucified in how many days? Two days. Two days. He seems to be calm. I, don't, I wouldn't be calm if he was going to tell me that. Matthew 20, 19 and 23, 34, he said he would be crucified. Told him that. Now he's going to give him when. This is the day. Okay? Caiaphas, the high priest... Chief priests and elders gathered privately. Why would they gather privately? Because they were afraid of the people. Well, how do the people change from they're afraid of them to crucify him? I've been thinking about that a lot. Have you ever, but have you ever been in a mob environment? No. I have. That's creepy. And, but it, it, it was actually in a play, but it was acting out the scene. But what was amazing to me was how easily yeah. you got caught up into that road of yeah because you know they snuck in among them they did to start that and route it up but as i was standing there and we were doing it i was like it is so works. easy just to get caught up right which is why the insurrection day is such a miracle the fact that thing that happened in dc that they didn't right. get caught up in a mob and riot like you're right I mean, I don't know how, I mean, there was, there was little things of it, but like that big of a crowd and right? the fact that it didn't, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Uh, they seize him after, why not during the Passover? What's the big deal? This is Rome. Well, because the people considered him a great prophet. Mm -hmm. and, they were destroying and what's the theme of Rome? The Pax Romana. The Peace. Peace of Rome. They, they don't, you know, who were they in trouble with if there is no peace in Rome? Uh, Caesar. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay, so uh, if we know we can do this, this is going to create, we're not going to do that right now. But we're going to do it. We're just not going to do it. Okay? All right, what was the Passover? You were looking up Passover in Exodus. What did you learn about that? I mean, I should say, did you learn anything new that you didn't know already? Because, you know, we did watch Charlton Heston. <laughs> okay. He is Moses. I do not know about the timing of the, um, when the lamb was sacrificed and prepared. Uh -huh. I did not realize that, you know, the son had to step first and had to be the next day. Right? And that they had to bring it in. They yeah. had to be in the household, not the barn, the household. So we get to know this little baby. Yeah, we get a little personal. We're taking care of it. We're inspecting it because it's got to be perfect. And if there's children, they've got it named, right? Is it my little whammy? <laughs> yeah. Let's go to bed with my little whammy. Yeah, okay. Personal. All of a sudden, this is costing them, isn't it? Now, the parents, in order to be obedient to save them from death, right. have to kill little Lanny. Right. Okay? We don't, we don't get that. We don't feel that because we don't have to do that. They did. The blood of the lamb was to be put on their doorposts and lentils. Okay? Be that mom. Be that kid. There it is. There's little Lanny right there. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, this hurts. But also just like the fear, like that's it. Right? That's all we do? Like, we're come going to my house. Really? Mm -hmm. my Which is what I love about Ten Commandments. You heard the screaming and the wailing of people that yeah. didn't do that. God meant it. First Corinthians 5 told us Christ is our Passover lamb, whose blood cleanses us 
from all sin. But now we get, oh, okay. And you know, they've gone also about saying that the, the post and the lentil is in the form of the cross. It's always foreshadowing, foreshadowing. This is what's gonna happen. He called himself the Lamb of God. That's what John the Baptist said. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Okay, we're going back to Matthew 1, 2. All right, uh, verses 6 to 16. Now Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper. A woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. But the disciples were indignant when they saw this. Okay, you've seen that word before, right? Who was it applied to? The Pharisees. The Pharisees. <laughs> And said, why this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you bother the woman? For she has done a good deed to me. You always have the poor with you, but do not always have me. For when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Now, uh, this is a flashback. Okay. When he's in Bethany, that's six days before the Passover. We just moved from two days to six days. Mm -hmm. This huge flashback, which will make this little section make sense. Okay? Six days before his burial, she's anointing him. Now, we know there's at least 17 people at this meal. We can count them. We know if Mary, Martha, Lazarus, right, Simon the leper, Jesus and the 12 disciples. So there's at least 17. A woman, okay, here's your reference. Mark 14, three and John 12, three. We know it's Mary. She poured an expensive perfume on his head and his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Okay, well, the hair is supposed to be the crowning glory of women. So she's anointing him for burial. We know the disciples were indignant, but it's actually Judas that said, why the waste? But again, the others joined in because they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's a lot of money we could have had. They joined in with him. So Matthew is correct when he says the disciples said Judas actually started it. Um, Judas was a thief. We know that simply because John 12, 5 through 6 tells us he was a thief. He was the one in charge, charge of, one that's in charge of the money, but he pilfered from it. So he stole from it. John tells us that. Why would John know that? I mean, this is money, Matthew you should know that. Think of who John is, right? The beloved of Christ. This is a, in my world, <laughs> Of, of when I talk about beavers, otters, golden retrievers, and lions, this is the golden retriever. This is the guy that knows everybody. And he doesn't know him here. He knows him here. Because he's that loyal. Okay, so he knows him deep. This is how he does that and includes it. He thinks that's an important thing to include in his gospel. Now, then we go... Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory, not of me, of her. Because we said a woman, but we all know it was Mary. Mm -hmm. And that, how do we know that? Because when this story is told, it's always included. And that it was his feet and his head, and she wiped it with her hair. Why do we know? Because it's always told that way. Verse 14, then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. Now, I want to know why Judas decided to do that. He's one of the twelve. He's been with him this whole time. Why the big change? Luke 22, John 13, and Mark 14 tell us Satan entered him. So it must mean that he never was really in it, right? Because Satan right. didn't enter him. Right. Not that they had the Holy Spirit yet. Yeah. Right, right, right. They right. 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 didn't have the Holy Spirit yet, but he was, like he was not a true follower. Okay. He hadn't. Uh, 
And again, we know that. Um, scripture tells us that. Um, Why did they need Judas to betray him? Like, it's, you know, you'll know because I kiss him or whatever, but, like, they knew who Jesus was. And even when he went to trial, they didn't, they were having trouble finding two witnesses to collaborate. Right. So what was the point of Judas? I mean, other than the fact of the Holy Scripture. I know the Holy Scripture, right. but I, I was like, well, why? They, they know who he is. It's not like they're like, well, who is this guy? So what was the I, point? I, this is just opinion, and I tell you guys, you know what I think about your opinion. Um, I think if you can divide the troops, you're starting to whittle it down. Right. I think he was the beginning of, they thought, dividing the troops, get rid of the way, and then we can just go on about what we always do. So maybe they the were, maybe that they helped, maybe maybe that helped change the crowd too, because they had the disciple, Correct. Well, one of Jesus's has now come out and said this. Uh -huh. And then they thought Peter, because he denied him, you know, they thought, oh, we got Peter too. And Peter so maybe that was one is of the a major the leader of them. So, so that's, maybe that was that's why it was, was the crowd. Because they don't say. Because they're scared. But then they even say, like, we can't do it in the festival. But then they did it during the festival. Right. So Because maybe, they got the crowd turned. Okay. okay. So it was more of the one shouting, the crowd. crucify him. Okay. That makes much more sense. Yeah. Much more sense. Okay. Yeah. I also You've ever been that. around a weasel? That's what. You're in church. I hope you squelch. Well, did you? Mm -mm 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 -mm. We don't, mm -mm. we don't do that. And inquire. I'm sorry, we get it a lot. And squelch it. No, well, I'm not joining in that. We're our big thing. We don't have robes anymore. <laughs> I, I, I know we don't have There's robes still anymore. People we're not up in the loft anymore. No, we're, we're, we're not. Those robes are collecting dust, baby. Along with this conversation. I just want to sell them to a church that wants them and needs them. or I just did because, you know, that's clutter for me. So I'm just like, I don't, if I knew, it would be a really good thing. But again, we ain't never done it this way before, is the Baptist theme. You know? We're, we were far away, way up there. Now we're down on the stage. We can see people. The congregation loves it because they see us. They interact with us. And our pastor has said that over and over and over and over and over again. But that's what the congregation says and has told them. We will not be having problems back. And it can only come from him. They're the only beast that he would, that he's the only one they would listen to. But we still. That's our, that's our job. Because we just bring it back to what our shepherd said. So this is who we follow. I'm sorry you feel like that, but this is what our shepherd said. So, moving on. <laughs> I just I'm not going there, nor will I let it spread. That's what I think happened here is that they got it all rubble, and then they it turned so fast. It turned so fast because um, it says from then on he began looking for an opportunity. Okay, that was verse 16. Is this part of Judas betraying still in the flashback? Or are we back to the normal time? I think we're, um, <laughs> well, let's get to it. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're back on the first day of unleavened bread. Okay. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? Right? So this is eating the Passover, which is a feast that lasts. Right? So we're not, I don't think we're two days again. I think we're back again. But I don't know. I don't, I don't have clarity on this one. Uh, he said, go into the city and uh, to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. Why would that matter to that man? My teacher says his time is near. Well, guessing that he's actually a follower and <laughs> Right, but because Jesus is going to use his house, his house exactly, and he freely lets him. And the okay? guy doesn't even get his name in the Bible. He doesn't even get his name in the Bible. I mean, really? It was his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to the Holy Land, they do. Did they point that out? They said they, they think that it was this place, and I forget the reasoning that they did it, but. It was like, oh, that possibly, that really could have been right there. I mean, this person was very freely giving. Freely, freely. Luke twenty two ten says it's a man carrying water. Men did not do that. Women went to the well and carried water. Men did not. 
So he stood right. out. So, you know, you can imagine going to the city and going, I'm supposed to talk to what man? <laughs> right, okay, this is gonna set him out. He's carrying water, that's not normal. First day of Passover week, okay? They're eating, Jesus tells the 12, uh, one of them's going to betray me. Look at verse um, 19. Because the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening came, okay, so now we're at night, Jesus was reclining at the table with all 12. I have read some place where they said Judas was not there. He's there, okay? What do we know Jesus did when they came in? He washed their feet. feet. So whose feet did he wash? Jesus. Yes. I just can't be Judas and go, he's washing my feet. I've already made a deal with, again, my conscience would be all over the place. As he's they got were Satan eating, in him. I mean, what? He's, he's, he's got Satan in him. Exactly. Like, I don't Which know is why he can continue right doing now. what he's doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Now, I uh, get more clarification in Mark 14 18. One who is eating with me. Okay. And Matthew 26 23, he who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. So we know Judas is there. So if you ever read in a commentary that Judas wasn't there, just know that's not right. Uh, Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, surely not I, Lord. And he answered, he who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. Again, this is a culture thing though. Remember that they, you know, this is cleansing their hands and doing this, cleansing their hands and doing, that was just like washing their feet before they came in. That's just a culture thing that we in you know, America go, why would he dip his hand in a bowl? Uh, the Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it's not I, Rabbi. Jesus said to him, You've said it yourself. Did he say the so it said that each one said surely not I Lord and then down here it says Judas said so the rabbi but like did Judas say that it's surely not I Lord and it's surely not I Rabbi or was it did I think he said Rabbi that's what I was thinking which is a step down step from Lord it's teacher but it's not and he said it again too later he mentioned he called him Rabbi later exactly he never calls him Lord not ever again but again if Satan has entered him I don't he can't (laughs) Satan cannot and that that. Rabbi, okay. Lord, remember, Satan put ideas in Judas' mind and entered into him. That is John 13. This is how he can do that. Judas was not a true believer. John 13.10 tells us that. It actually says that. Judas did it for money. Back on verse 15, what did he give him? What did he sell Jesus for? 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. Who put that value on Jesus? Judas. Who gave it to him? Pharisees. Pharisees. This is what he's worth. 30 pieces of silver. What's that worth in today's... You know, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know, but I did read that was what a slave would go for. Is that right? In order to purchase a slave. So if they sold a slave, you'd get about yeah. 30 pieces of silver. Are you sure? 13.10? John 13.10? One who has bathed, Jesus told him, doesn't need to wash anything except his feet, but he is completely clean, you are clean. Oh, but, but not, not all of you. Okay. Right. In Exodus, it's, um, that's what you paid the owner for the loss of the slave. How? Oh, for the loss of the, the slave. slave. So it's retribution. Yeah. How about that? Oh, and that was Exodus... Do you know what it is? 21, verse 32. Exodus 21, 32. Thank you, Rosemary. I love details. Did they not have inflation back then? <laughs> <laughs> Going from Exodus to here, that's a lot of years for inflation. <laughs> See, another still, good question. still finding stuff. I really <laughs> wonder if this thing. <laughs> oh, what's this? What's that worth? I think it's the same as this. Really? Okay. Right? Were they still using the same cost? You like, can't help but think about that. 
like, I mean, we have to have inflation in 10 years. This is like over a thousand years. I agree. I agree. Okay, sorry. Like, seriously, though, was there inflation? Was it? Uh, why didn't it? Or did the they seriously have the same prices back then? Well, that's the gold standard. Yeah. Oh, I mean, basically, yeah. Yeah. Gold and silver. So yeah, there was no sense. currency to value. Right. No, that's yeah. right. So. Man, life without inflation. Yeah, right? <laughs> Ooh, that'd be nice. Get out your conversion chart. Get <laughs> out my conversion chart. Uh, verse 26. While they were eating. So where are they still? At the table. Right, they're at the table. Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Well, how many all is there now? Judas left. Judas left. Right. So there's 11 there now. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for many, how come he doesn't say all, for forgiveness of sins? Uh, where did you get Judas left? Yeah, I was about to ask I that. got, uh, let's see. It doesn't yeah, say it here. Judas so leaves, then leaves at night, so he did not receive the forgiveness. I'm Luke 22, 21. Let's see what that says. Because I'm getting, I was always trying to get the timeline. Okay, when does this happen? And this yeah, fits, in, this so fits in here, and this fits in there. It says, but look, the hand of the one betraying me is at the table, won't move, but the son of man will go away, as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. So when they began to argue amongst themselves, it doesn't say that he left. It doesn't say he left. No, it doesn't. Hang on. But I didn't know what he does. Yeah, because he's, he's subtly. He says, Behold, the hand of one betraying me is with mine on the table, because that's when he's going into the bowl, right? right. Um, what is one has been betrayed? And they're all to finish. Okay, then that's when they want to be great among them. And Judas partook of the passage. What's John 13 30 say? John. 1330. Yes, 13, that's when Jesus says, what you do, do quickly. John 13, and 27. So after receiving the morsel, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't drink the cup. He, drank the, he had the morsel. He went out immediately and it was night. Does that make sense? Yeah. But Jesus that's, ate the bread. Right, that's the morsel. John 1330. Oh. Sorry, I should have put that in there. John 1330. 30. Yeah. Okay, so if he receives a morsel, what does he not receive? Not, what does he not receive? The he blood. didn't receive blood. Mm -hmm. What does that, the like, blood do? The old covenant and then the new covenant. Exactly. Wow. That okay. So what is the what does the cup do? What's he say that is? The blood is blood. For the forgiveness, oh, forgiveness of many. Mm. Oh, oh, every word Christ uses. So specific. I don't think the disciples got that. But they have just seen Judas exit in between the meal. Okay? That's that's so rare. You just don't do that. This is a sacred time to the Jews. This is Passover meal. They even know where do you want us to go and prepare for it? Because there are certain things that have to be done, certain things that have to be there for him too. Have the bread, have the wine, set out. There's bitter herbs. There's. They had to go prepare and get all that stuff. It's interesting that Matthew wouldn't be the one to point that out, though, because he was so much into the old right? covenant, new covenant. You would right. think he would have mentioned Judas leaving here. Exactly. I, I know. I was like, I was a little frustrated with him. Maybe he's I feel like he, he would be the one to get, catch it more than anybody, right. in my opinion. Right. Because it's interesting. Been more detailed to pick up totally. the conversation. And the yes, old covenant's new covenant. Thing. Exactly. It's all about to the Jews. But Jesus exactly. had already said, one of you will betray one me, of and one of you whose hand was in the, in the cup. And then for this one to get up and leave you, it's like, whoa, that's him. Yeah. 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 And we know, right, the beloved disciple who is John put his head on his shoulder, right? And we know from another gospel, who is it, Lord? He said, it's the one I give this to. Okay, but read verse 28. No of the table knew why Jesus right. had said to right. Judas, what you do, do quickly. Right? Mm. So it was right. not revealed Isn't it? To it's, it's they not, might have think he's like sent him out for a chore or something. That's what I was going to say. He missed out a lot. I mean, he really did that a lot in the gospel. Well, for right. some, we're supposing that Judas had the money box and he'd been sent on a task. I would, 
I, I wouldn't. Okay. If I were there, but I'd still be going. That's just a weird time to leave. Did you just take the money box with him? A weird time to leave. I oh. don't know. I don't know. I wonder if he did. Whether he did that or not. Because I mean, they've been collecting money all this time, and he was well, just saying that there's a cousin like, that he has it, and so Jesus has sent him on a task. Well, I know, but I didn't wonder if he did take it with him. He was a tax collector. Right? So that should have been his job. The bottom. That's a good point. So that maybe, should have been his job. He knows money. Yeah, but maybe he was just like, maybe. But, but I don't know trust Jesus. factor because of. Oh, trust because factor. Because he was a tax yeah. collector. Yeah. He worked for the Roman. Yeah. No, yeah. that's why he did have He brought, he, I mean, there might have been for him too. Like, what he's been torn so much from his bad decision and everything. Right. Like, yeah. I don't want to touch any more money. I'm done with that. Don't give me money. Uh huh. You looked up covenant. If he was a tax collector. Covenant is all through scripture. Why, what's the big deal about covenant? This is, again, Jewish culture major. And if you understand covenant through scripture, it just bounces out at you. Uh, the, the word is berith, okay? It means to cut or to walk among the pieces. Hence, when Abraham, you know, put so much on this side, so much on this side, and he, he, this Holy Spirit walked through, you know, the flaming, the smoking lantern walks through, okay? He's cutting covenant, all right? Um, I've said this before in weddings. It is a covenant marriage. Mm -hmm. You, It is so symbolic of the traditions that we do of walking down one aisle and you're coming up the next. You've just cut family. When you take the name for us women, covenant says your enemies are my enemies, my friends are your friends. If you're in trouble, I'm in trouble. Just like that. Who you are, I am. Okay? Hence Elijah and Elisha putting cloak. Okay? He changed that. He's taken on his identity because they cut covenant. Okay? Put that here. This is the new covenant, and he said it's not like the old. But Jesus came to fulfill what? Prophecy. Yes. He did not come to abolish. The law. The law. But to fulfill it. How, okay, how, he's, he's doing the law, right? He's doing Passover. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Exactly when he's supposed to do it. The law is now written on our heart. The old covenant's written on where? Okay, so how can it be written on our heart? Holy Spirit is inside. Holy Spirit is inside now. Can we keep the law now? <laughs> right? We can't. Holy Spirit through us. Yes. Okay? That's possible now. Uh, because it's not our power now. Right? Uh, he will be their God and they will be his people. No more rebellion, 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 rebellion. It's not going to happen anymore yet. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, all will know him. All, not just a select few, all will know him. When Jesus said, you're going to do greater works than I have, how could he say that? As far as spreading the message, which you can see God's hand in, there's no way humans could have done that, but they did. Well, where did he stay? Where was Jesus? He's as far as I know, he never went to Orlando. So. Yeah, no, he stayed right, right there. In, in that territory. Right there, right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Had Holy Spirit come yet? No. 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 So when Holy Spirit comes, whew, exactly. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Right. Have we? Yes. The disciples created a movement. Okay? Greater in uh, power? No. Exponentially? Yes. Huge. Okay? All will know him because I have Holy Spirit now. I can read scripture, have no college degree. Truly, when I started preaching, I'm like, I am too dumb to do this. I can't do this. I just, I'm not smart enough. Holy Spirit's author of the book is within. I'm no smarter than David Uden. You, well, that's really not true. He has Greek majors, so, you know. The intelligence is there, but the ability to learn, I have the author inside. So that's how it's written on our hearts now, not on stone. 
Jesus gives us access into the throne of God. What happened when he died? What split the curtain? Split in two. Nobody was allowed to be in there except the high priest. So not even Jews. Only one. And only one time a year. But when Jesus dies, that veil splits from the bottom to the top. The top to the bottom. Now who can see what? What's behind that veil? The Holy of Holies. What did that signify? To the Jews? That's where God's presence was. But they didn't have the ark at this point. The ark was lost before Jesus, wasn't it? No. No. That's in the temple. In the okay, it was in the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Yes. So it was at 70 Which AD. Which is why it's so it? significant. Was it 70 AD when the temple was torn down? The yes. Lost, the lost? Correct. Now, I want you to think about that when you're going into this last chapter, and he's he's um, he's dead. Okay, and veil. Mm -hmm. This is during what? Passover. Passover. Okay? This is a sacred time. This is where God's presence was. What do they call the covering over the Ark of the Covenant? Mercy seat. Mercy seat. Who now just brought mercy to all? Jesus. He paid that price that we couldn't pay and split that bail and said, now all can come into my presence. We just don't get it because we, we're not Jews. We're not that culture. This was so symbolic everywhere, it was crazy. You, you couldn't miss it, really, if you were looking for it. You couldn't. There's no way. I don't know how they repaired the veil. Because, you know, if you're going to go back to the sacrifice and everything which they did, you've got to repair the veil. Whether God's presence was there anymore? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. But I don't know. That's just one of those, hmm. Okay? In the New Covenant, your sins are forgiven. What's different in the Old? They're covered. They're covered. Because it says the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin. Jesus wiped them out. Now there's no remembrance of sin. What it, you know, we made a joke with the law. It's like he's pulling his sheep with him. And all the other Jews go, oh, what'd you do? Oh, yeah, you're going to the temple because you've got to sacrifice because you sinned. What did you do? Constant, constant remember. Constant, constant remembrance. Now, don't remember your sins anymore. How could he say that? Because he was a lamb. Because he, he was a lamb. He was a lamb. And he said, I have come to save my people from their sins. So he's not just covered it. He's paid for it. That's why he says to tell us that it is finished. You can stamp on there, paid for, paid in full, done, no debt. Okay? This is, this is huge when he says this is my blood of the new covenant. 1 Corinthians um, 11, you had to read that in your homework. Uh, I don't, page 77, 78, I think. By the way, the last known place to Ark Covenant was stolen by Babylon in 500 something BC, and they don't have any proof that it ever came back after that. There's no, it's never mentioned in the Bible after that. It was mentioned in the Bible that it was stolen then, and there's no, so based off everything, historians don't believe the Ark Covenant was there during Jesus' time. Except this is Solomon's temple. No, this is not Solomon's temple. This is Herod's temple, which was destroyed in 70 AD. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11. What does Paul tell us? Right, remembering his death. That is not a happy time. But we're supposed to remember that for how long? Until he comes. Well, until he came back, we know it appeared to the disciples, or when he comes back, back. Back, back, this is back, back. Right, when he comes back, back. As king. Second coming when he comes. This is why we still have Lord's Supper. We still do that. Because we're remembering his death. Until remember his death? Do you remember the last Passover Supper when the new covenant was well, instituted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But I, I always thought, I'm remembering um, that he, he rose again and he prayed for my sins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. well, but he has to die before he does that. I say, remembering yeah. his death, you're remembering the purpose for his death. Exactly. It was to pay. And why he came. This is what you're remembering of why. Why, why he came. Okay? He's, he knows what's going to happen in two days. He knows it's coming. Um, 29. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, I love that. I never thought that before. That was the first time I thought that one. Got to sing. Yeah, got to sing. They went out to the Mount of Olives. And then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away. Who have they seen fall away? Jesus. Right. Yes. You will all fall away because of me this night. Tonight. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, oh yeah. Okay? If I'm a disciple, I'm going, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You said you're going to raise the third day. I'm going to go to Galilee. So where should they be looking for him? In Galilee. Are they in Galilee? No. They're in Jerusalem. They're not really close to Galilee. No, they're not. <laughs> exactly. And they're not there when he first raises from the dead either. No, they're, they're not. In Jerusalem. They're, the sheep are scattered. Mm -hmm. But Peter said to him, even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. That Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, this very night, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And then all the disciples said the same thing. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, right? Right? Okay. They also all said, what a waste of money for the perfume. Okay, they all joined in to say that. All right. Jesus thinks of the kingdom of God. He doesn't say kingdom of heaven. This is different. He changes his verbiage. The kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of heaven is where? Here. At hand. Right. Okay. The kingdom will not end, even though he's leaving. That's an encouragement. Okay. Matthew 16, 21, and then all oh, just right there. Jesus told him he'd be suffered. He would suffer, die, and be raised on the third day. Okay. You know, we humans, we check out. We get the bad news. What's the good news? I don't know. We're just stuck right here. Third day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because where are they on the third day? They're there. They're there. They're hiding. Right. Did you forget? They're just engulfed in grief. That's a horrible death to watch. They went out singing a hymn. Now, traditionally, that's going to be Psalm 116 to 118, which uh, I wrote down. It was thanksgiving for deliverance from death, praise, and thanksgiving for the Lord's saving goodness. That's what they went out singing, which is very interesting. Traditionally, again, I'm not telling you that's absolute gospel. That's just tradition says that's what happened. Now, I wanted to know, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Where is that? Because you said, that's prophecy, right? So it must be written in the Old Testament. Zechariah 13, 7. It says that. That was a disciple who just ran and hid. Yeah. <laughs> I constantly think, Lord, I wasn't born back then. So, I, you know, a Roman soldier is a very intimidating person. And not just one came. And then they come with clubs and swords. I'm sorry, I think I would run too. I'm just, you know, your fear of your life. And they did. Of course they did. At first, Peter cut off an ear. He fought back first. Why don't we know that? It's not here. Right? That's true. It's not here. Who puts it down? Luke. Is Luke one of the 12? Uh -uh. No. No. Is Luke the doctor? Okay? We have to put their personalities in here going, Matthew, you didn't think that was important? I guess not. 
And Luke, he's a doctor. I'm like, man, he put, his, he put it back on. It was like, oh, so who was there? Luke was a disciple. He was there. He wasn't of the 12. But he's there. He must be witnessing this. Now, unless somebody's told him, unless one of the 12 has told him, Jesus told Peter, this is, and again, Matthew doesn't put that in there. This is Luke 22. Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you, that your faith would endure, and the rest of that verse is that you will strengthen the brothers when you return. Do you think Peter heard that part? I would have gone, Satan's done what for me? What? Why me? What did I do? But I've prayed for you that your faith would endure and that later you would kind of strengthen your brothers. Okay? Well, I, what? Strengthen the brothers? Wait, wait, what? He's going to do what to me? Okay? Because that's what we are. That's, that's the kind of people we are. We hear one thing, we don't hear the other. You have children like that. I'm like that. How could you? Didn't, didn't you hear me say? No, Mom, I just heard the... I do that. Husbands of mine, we do that. You didn't say that. I did say that. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. I said it right after. <laughs> right? After when you checked out. Yeah. Because that's what we do. We can only take in so much, and then we check out. I think you heard it. I think it's one of those things that it didn't mean anything to him at that time. At that time. It was consumed with Satan as the man that Right, Satan. right. But when you consider... His ministry. He recovered. He, he repented. He, he remembered. He did. He, he did. remembered those words. Then he tells him he's going to deny him three times that night. Okay, now, Peter's going in front. I think he's wrapped up. I will not, till we know what he did. All right? 36. Jesus comes to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, that, you know what, and I'm going to encourage you, if you can go to the Holy Land, go. Go, 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 go. When he said Gethsemane, did you not put yourself right back there? Mm -hmm. Boom. There I am. Oh, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. This is what the garden looks like. Jerusalem. Red Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. How far was over there? Now, garden of Gethsemane means oil press. Okay, Jesus is being pressed. This is a very appropriate place for him to be. He can see the temple. Doesn't know where it says that, but if you're there, you know there's the temple. You can see the steps. He went a short distance away. Luke 22, 41 says it's a stone's throw away. So it's not far. The garden is not big. Um, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. So who are they? What did they see? He took him, they, they saw the transfiguration. They took, he took him there for, as well. Okay, if I'm like Matthew, I'm going, of them again? Why not me? Why do you have to take them? Why not me? Be them, okay? You know how you would be. I, it's my turn. It's my turn. Why do you take them? They already went. I don't know what they saw because they haven't told me yet, but it had to have changed them to see the transfiguration. It had to have changed them. And he began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here. Keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, so... You men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But why does he have to say that to Peter? I mean, he's not the only one sleeping. Why signal, single him out? He kept saying, not I, not I. He yeah. doesn't do any of these things. Right? I would die before I denied you. Right. But I just asked you to pray. Mm -hmm. Right? The spirit's willing flesh is weak. Um, Jesus is deeply grieved. This is a really important thing 
that Luke tells us that an angel of heaven appeared and ministered and encouraged him. He's not forgotten. Don't you want to know? This is what I'm going to have to do. My father has not forgotten me. Okay. I know he's going to have to turn away from me, but he hasn't forgotten. He, he's right here with me. He's feeling this just like I am. He's even sent his angel to me to give me encouragement so I can do this thing. He knows what's coming. They don't. But he knows. Uh, again, that's a reference you'd want to put there because that's when it comes. What does that sound? Remember, too, that he is God and man. Yes, at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's feeling the flesh part of, like, I totally. what I'm going to have to endure. Yes. And the human we get checked out just like that, going, that's too much. These people aren't worth it. Mm -hmm. could totally, just like that. I heard somebody say something. That they, you know, you always hear that Jesus stayed on the cross for us, which is true. He loves us, and he did, you know, do it for forgiveness of sins. But they said, but we get so selfish about it. He did it for God because he says he doesn't say, you know, he says, "Your will, not mine." It's his obedience to the Father. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. How did he start out in Matthew five and six? What is that about? Well, he starts with the Lord's prayer. That's the starting of the God's will. Right? And then we go in. Is to the model prayer. Because if he says, if it's possible that this cup pass from me yet, not as I will, but you, do, that takes me right back to Matthew 6, right? His main focus was obedience to his father. That was his, that was his main focus. Right? He doesn't even say anything except the father tells him what to say. Right. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's, I mean, he loved us, and it's through his much. obedience to his father, he loved us, but I feel like that's also how we should model our lives, too. Correct. Is It's about obedience. We, we will show love, but as we're obedient to the father and growing the father, the love happens, and we love people the way that God loves us. It's a natural overflow. Rather than we get so focused on focusing on what we're doing that we forget the just dwelling I in agree. Christ. I agree. Okay, this, he says, keep watching, keep praying. This is a continuous thing. Okay, this is what you're supposed to do. That you don't into a temptation. What what are they supposed to be being tempted to do? Fall asleep. Hmm? asleep. Yeah, fall asleep. What he knows is coming. Mm -hmm. Living, right, because I told you all, you're all gonna leave. But I also think it's for for going forward in their ministry. Right? Because they could check out too. Like, listen, this is not worth it. I'm going back. Mm -hmm. Remember, it says in, uh, again in the model prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Who has been overtaken by evil? Judas. Judas. Okay? They've got a visual. And now here he comes, right? Mm -hmm. He went away a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left it again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting instead of still keeping watch and keeping praying? This is what they're doing. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is coming, is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Has he come in yet? No. No. Here's God's sovereignty again, his omniscience. He, he still knows what's about to happen, the very minute that's about to happen. While he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came up. Now, it's just amazing to me that Matthew con still considers him one of the twelve. Came up accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who came from the chief priests and elders of the people. So where has this large crowd come from? The chief priests and elders. Right, so who stirred them up? The chief the chief, yeah, right? So here's that mentality starting to happen in the mob. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign. I don't know why he doesn't say Judas. Isn't that funny? Just says he, what you remember, this is the guy who's betraying him. Gave them a sign saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately, Judas went to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. 
I don't understand that. Everybody knew who Jesus was. Um, That's what I'm saying. That's what. Yeah. Like, they really needed a point of mouse this morning? <laughs> they got 30 pieces of silver that, to do it. Did everyone know? Yeah. I mean, they're traveling as a group, and Correct. this big mob is coming in, and right. they're not necessarily followers. Right. Jerusalem is not that small of a city. Yeah, you've heard all these rumors. Well, we did have a triumphant, and, but what if you're not following him and you've been stirred up? But I think most crowd. people have heard about it. When, when you point out a defendant, that's say, what. Yeah. I was thinking about the lineup, you know. It's, it's not like everybody knows yeah. who it was, but they have to be, like, the legal part of, like, right. I have to point it out right. so that it's, you know, right. legal. That's what I was thinking. It was kind of like one of those lineups. It's a mob. It's a crowd. It's a mob. And it's easier to go. That's him. That's it. Because right. of everything going on. And truthfully, weren't they all kind of dressed? Very, yes, very they were. And it's nighttime. Yeah. And it's the nighttime, big boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they don't have electricity. <laughs> Yeah. And remember, the triumphal entry, nobody, not everybody in Jerusalem would have been there. I mean, right. chief priests and elders would have, okay? Point him out. This is almost like the witness that has to come forward, okay? Uh, again, timeline stuff. I love this uh, quote from Wearsby. It says, as perfect man, he felt the awful burden of sin, and his holy soul was repelled. Because all of the sin, you can, it's the evil in our world, which is beyond, I mean, at least I cannot watch certain programs because I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. Jesus took all of that upon him. Sinless lamb. He took it all. Uh, the crowd comes with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders. Luke twenty-two thirty-six says, remember he told them, go sell your cloak, buy a sword. That's what he told them to do. This is why one of them's got a sword. Two of them actually have a sword. John 18, 4 and 5 says, Jesus asks them, this to me is crucial, whom do you seek? And they say, Jesus the Nazarene. And what does he reply? I be, as in, you don't need that guy. Just ask me. I'll tell you. Because that's who he is. He's, he's not a liar. John, uh, but going on in verse 6 and 7, the crowd drew back and fell to the ground. You think that's a little important? Yeah, what? I'm like, whoa, the crowd fell to the ground. That, now, that's just quite the scene for me. They've come with clubs, right? We know there's torches because you got to see. They fall to the ground, and he doesn't run then. See, that's his opportunity to pff, out of here. He just comes up to them again and says... Whom do you seek? I am he. Then he goes and he says, uh, he asks the disciples, he says, um, let these go their way. So he doesn't want the disciples arrested. Just him. Because that's fulfilling scripture again. Of those that you gave me, I've not lost one. What does that tell you Judas is not? He's not one. He wasn't given to him. Because a lot of people want you to think that Judas repented and went back. I haven't found that yet. I haven't found it yet. Maybe I will. But at this point, I've not found that. He says, friend, right? Jesus says, friend, do what you have come for. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. Friend was used twice in Matthew before. One was um, the landowner, remember, and the, the slave or the vine vineyard workers that were out there, and they didn't like that the people that got paid right at the end got the same amount that they did when they worked all day. And he said, friend, I've done you no wrong. Stay friend. Mm -hmm. Then the guy that comes to the wedding feast, he's dressed in the wrong clothes. Friend, same thing. Companion. And I looked a little deeper into that one, and I found this little commentary thing that said, Jesus met sarcasm with sarcasm. Yeah, right? He was being Hail. sarcastic to Rabbi, Judas, friend. but Judas was being sarcastic. Ah, that's good. You're my friend. Right? I him and betrayed him. Right? So that's good. There's two sarcasms there. That's good. But I thought it was pretty witty of Jesus. It's, well, you know, and it's a, an appropriate greeting for him. Mm -hmm. Behold, one of those who were with Jesus reached and drew out his sword. Why doesn't Matthew say Peter did that? 
I don't know. I'm saying, I'm just saying, so like somebody <laughs> reached out their sword and, you know, struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. Do you know how many angels that is? 72,000. Oh, wow. One legion was 6,000. Okay. He says 12. I don't even know what that would look like. <laughs> but what appeared in the sky to announce his birth? Angels. Oh. So that the whole sky was lit up with them. That announced his birth. All this has taken place to fulfill the scriptures of the prophets. And then what do the disciples do? All of them left. So here's Jesus with the mob alone. But we know that Peter followed. Right? Peter drew the sword. John 18.10 tells us that was Peter. We also know um, the slave's name was Malchus. What do we also know about the ear? Right. I mean, as a disciple, like, what would you do? So he just told you don't fight back, so I'm not supposed to fight back, so what are you supposed to do? Like, right. it's either fight or run. Like, I feel like those are the only options right. here, so he said don't fight. I'm oh. out. <laughs> and, and who records that he put the ear back on? Luke, who is the doctor. doctor. Yeah. Miraculous. Now, what would have happened? Think about this. What would have happened if he hadn't put the ear back on one of the disciples drew a sword? That's violence, right? No. Pax Romana. Oh. Somebody might have killed Peter. Somebody might have killed Peter. Or he might have been arrested. He might have ended up on the cross with him. But you have to, I mean, you have to look at this and go, wow, Jesus in all his stress and what he knew he was going to face with everybody right. like looking Still right protected. at him, picks it up and put it right back on. Right. And wow. don't, don't take these guys. Don't, no, no. Just let them go. You're not after them. You're after yeah, them. In our human nature, in our human nature, when you go, got what you deserve. Well, right. You know, in our human nature. Right. But he, right. he didn't, he, it, it was still that love still and forgiveness that was coming out. End. Forgive them for they don't know what yeah. they're doing. That's powerful. No matter what we see uh, pictured, it's worse when he's on the cross. It's Isaiah said they walked by and you couldn't tell it was a man. Yeah, I still can't even watch Passion of the Christ. Like, I can't keep couldn't my eyes open the whole time. A man. Yeah. He is ripped open. Okay, the pain I cannot imagine. My well, pastor's been doing a series leading up to Easter on the minor characters. And he did uh -huh. Malchus one week. And, um, it's and, fun to try to see And had done some digging. And they, to say, they find out what happened. They referred to him as a servant. Mm -hmm. But he could have been an attending servant. Mm -hmm. Or he could have been an advisor to yeah. the high priest. So he could have been he was a with slave the high, high priest. House. Always in all the things and have been observing and conversing with the high priest. About so, who everything. do you think was there then? So, he could have been there with them, but they could have recognized that he's always with the high priest, bodyguardish, or something like that. But maybe like the that. high priest was there if Malchus was there. He would have been. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Do we know if he ever got, like, do we know anything of the story after this? Because I can only imagine the rest of your life knowing that, like, you're, you're know. you know, yeah. like, every time yeah. you're, it's, I know. Yeah. yeah, and then that, and, and he did, he goes, you know, you've been touched by Jesus, and you've observed everything. Was he educated in, in, in any way, and did he, did he already have questions, even though he was supposed to be loyal to right. the high priest? Right, mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus chose to do the healing right. on him. right. And, um, and how do you walk away from that? And not be changed. And not be changed. Right. Yeah. Again, Peter sees this miraculous, save my butt, again, right? Let me pull you up out of the water so you don't drown. Right? Let me fix this because you just react. Okay? It says, um, at that time, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would against a robber? Every day I used to sit in the temple teaching and you didn't seize me. 
But all this has taken place to fulfill the scriptures of the prophets. All of that he knew was supposed to happen. You come at me like I'm a robber. Well, who was the actual robber? Judas. Well, Judas, because he's pilfered from the box, right? Um, Jesus had called him son of perdition, which actually means son of waste. But that was in John 17, 12. And then it says, and he perished. So this is how Judas died. He perished. Matthew 26, uh, 31, fulfilled all the disciples' food, right? So just make sure you go, oh, verse 31 just got fulfilled right there. Verse 57, those who had seized Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. But Peter oh, was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest and entered in and sat down with the officers to see the outcome. Now the chief priests and the whole council kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. They did not find any, even though many false witnesses came forward. Now, I don't know if they had to look that up or not. He's taken to Caiaphas' house, but he was at somebody else's house first. John 13 says he was at Annas' house. Caiaphas is his father-in-law. So who's he married to? Right? Caiaphas' father. Um, they took him there first. Annas sends him to Caiaphas. So he's already been one place, and now he goes to another. Peter follows at a distance as far as the courtyard. In John, he tells on himself, he's also there. He got access into the courtyard. That's how Peter was there. So John's kind of following too. Peter, I think, is trying to prove the Lord wrong. I will not. I will not. I'm even going to follow you as close as the courtyard because everybody else flee. The chief priest and the council kept trying to obtain false testimony. That goes against the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. But the chief priests and the elders who know the law are going against the law. Okay? Result of the false testimony, if you read that in Exodus, whatever they're trying to do to Jesus gets done to them if false testimony is found out. Okay? The false witnesses could keep their story straight. Mark tells us that. Because they're false witnesses. You can't keep your story straight. Because it's not the truth. It's much easier to keep track of the truth than it is some, a lie. Wearsby says the letter of the law was fulfilled, but that they lied broke both the letter and the spirit of the law. 61. Oh, I'm going to start at 60. They did not find any false witnesses, right, or witnesses, even though many false witnesses came forward. But later on, two came forward and said, this man stated, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. Did you say that? Florida kind of? No, but not exactly not like that. Right. That's not the way. Got a direct quote. Direct quote comes from John 2.19. 219 says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. He was talking about his body. That's in context, okay? That's John 219. What's the difference? He's not destroying the temple. He's raising it up. That's, okay, that's big. This is the temple, the most holy thing. You're going to destroy it. I didn't say that. These people don't know they're lying. That's how they interpreted it, and that's what they're saying. Good point. Good point. The high priest stood up and said to him, Do you not answer? What is it that these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You've said it yourself. Nevertheless, I tell you hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. He's saying this to who? Would, Dan, would he have known Daniel 7? Oh boy, that's a direct quote. The Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power coming on the clouds of heaven. This is why the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need do we have of witnesses? Behold, you have now 
heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, he deserves death. Because blasphemy did deserve death. I mean, that's, that's it. But what did the false witnesses deserve? Death. But then who's he? Is it they answered? Who's they? They answered. I put the, um, the elders, the prophecy, or the prophets, the, all the, the crowd. Are they the ones that get to decide that? Evidently. What, see, they got to get Rome to do it for them because they can't do that. But they're like all together and they say this is what mm -hmm. Because again, they're stirring up the crowd. Then they spat in his face and beat him with their fists, and others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who's the one who hit you? Could he have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He could have told him, but. Mm. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he'd gone out the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath, as in, I swear, okay, I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, surely you too are one of them, for even the way you talk gives you away. Then Peter began to curse and swear, I do not know the man, and immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly, so would I. So would I, because what Jesus said, I will do, I did. I did it. It says he heard him three times. In Luke 22, it says he was close enough that the Lord looked at him, turned and looked at him, and their eyes met. So he's close enough to make eye contact. Okay? The discipline, oh, I did it. I did it. Peter remembered the words and went out weeping. Now, this little detail is about the courtyard. Mark 14 tells us the rooster quote a second time. So there's somewhere in between the second and third Third time, Peter's got a chance to go, oh, 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 I'm doing it, I'm doing it. But he doesn't. He's scared to death. We also know that one of the people, um, slaves of the high priest, was Malchus. One of those ones was back, like Lynn said, back with the high priest in the courtyard. In John 18, it tells us it was Malchus. Malchus was doing part of the accusing. So I want to know, why did Peter follow? This danger, danger, real Robinson, right? John follows. Mm -hmm. so, okay, you guys, this is going to be a dangerous place here. So what, you sure you want to go there? These were the three, but where's Andrew, right? Peter, James, and John. Sorry, James. Where's James? They're all three always, you know. Together, yeah. But nothing. I don't have the foggiest idea where he is. These were the three that were singled out to pray with him and the three that saw the transfiguration. So two out of the three go a little bit further than the others, but they still, right? In your theme, you know, we always try and label it. Jesus betrayed, arrested, and denied. Because we know bad things are kind of about to happen, right? Because we know the end of the story. We know good things are about to happen, too. But be the disciples. They are terrified beyond belief as I would be. Question is, do I take the Lord's Supper remembering his death and thanking him for that? He paid the price I never could. And do I live and tell others about that salvation? Do I pray like he did, even to the extent of allowing myself to suffer for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven? Am I that obedient, that I will be willing to suffer if that brings someone to Christ. I can't say that I am. If I can't say that I am, I want to be, like Peter, right? I want to be. Uh, am I afraid of suffering like Peter was, or do I deny him by not wanting his will on earth? I want what I want, because that's better. That's denying him, okay? Ray's going to give us uh, Lord's Supper. 
I have a memorial to go to, so when I skip out about 1130, I know where I went. Well, I won't be doing this till 1130. I uh, know you will not. <laughs> <laughs>